I'm Nathan Lundstad with the Utah Division of Drinking Water. Welcome to this online sanitary survey presentation regarding source and storage capacity. This presentation will provide details on capacity calculations, including where to find the Excel spreadsheet used to perform the calculations, the real requirements for source, storage, fire flow determinations. There's also a section on recreational home developments and storage determination for hydrodynamic or pressure tanks. At the end, I'll provide an example capacity calculation for a community water system. Examples for other types of water systems will be provided as separate presentations or screencasts. The most current version of the capacity calculation spreadsheet can be found on our website at drinkingwater.utah.gov by navigating to the DDW A to Z index on the left side of the web page. It is recommended that you go here to get a copy of the spreadsheet to ensure that you have the most up-to-date version. The capacity calculation spreadsheets are found under C. There are two versions, a protected and unprotected spreadsheet. The unprotected spreadsheet will need to be used when having to modify the demands as shown in some of the other screencasts. We'll now cover the requirements for source capacity. Drinking Water Rule R309 510-7 provides the requirements for minimum source sizing. This includes indoor and outdoor demands. Tables 510, 1 and 2 provide the indoor use values for equivalent residential connections or ERCs. The minimum peak demand is 800 gallons per day per connection or an average yearly demand of 146,000 gallons per connection. The outdoor demands are listed in Table 510-3. The zone is based on the location found on the irrigation zone map. The corresponding zone is now listed on the top header of the public water system report to take out some of the guesswork and establish consistency between surveys. By using Zone 3 as an example, the outdoor peak day demand is 3.39 gallons per minute per irrigated acre. The outdoor average yearly demand is 1.66 acre feet per irrigated acre. This is the image of the irrigation zone map. Utah has six climate zones, excluding non-arable lands, which correspond with crop consumptive use and annual precipitation. In northern mountains, the outside watering requirements would be quite low, Zone 1, compared with the southern part of the state where the climate is usually very warm, Zone 6. As a result, these use zones have different outside watering requirements. These are copies of tables 5, 10, 1, and 3, showing the minimum value for indoor and outdoor source demands described in the previous slides. Table 510-2 lists demands for various types of establishments that may be associated with non-community water systems. This table includes many other establishment types not shown here. We often get questions on where to find the flow rates to use in the capacity calculations. To get these values, it may take some work and should be determined during the survey. For example, they may include the equipped well capacity for a well, yield of a spring, uh, low flow is more conservative. This can be calculated with a stopwatch and a gallon bucket during the survey. Flow rates may also be used on, on a wholesale connection agreement or the capacity of a water treatment plant. We'll now cover the requirements for storage capacity. Drinking Water Rule R309 510-8 provides the requirements for minimum storage sizing. This includes the volume of storage required for indoor and outdoor demands plus fire demands and emergency storage if required. Tables 510-4 and 5 provide the indoor use values for equivalent residential connections or ERCs. Storage for residential indoor use is a minimum of 400 gallons per equivalent residential connection. The storage for outdoor use is dependent on which irrigation zone the system is in. Using Zone 3 as an example, the required volume is 2.528 gallons per irrigated acre. Storage for fire suppression is based on the requirements from the local fire marshal for flow and duration. As a default, 1,000 gallons per minute for two hours, which equals 120,000 gallons, is required if no precise data can be determined from the local fire marshal. Emergency storage would be a requirement determined by the system or their engineer. These are copies of tables 510-4 and 5, showing the minimum values for indoor and outdoor storage volumes described in the previous slides. We would like to emphasize the importance of follow-up with the local fire authority to assist in determining fire flow requirements. The default value of 120,000 gallons may be insufficient or a burden on the system if there are different local requirements. Many of you will perform sanitary surveys for recreational home developments. Many of these systems may request a reduction in their source and storage demands, but we issue caution in doing this. 
please consult with the Division of Drinking Water if asked to lower these requirements. Table 510-1 allows for a reduction for the source demand for recreational home developments, but without extensive data to support this claim, we, re we recommend that this reduction not be made. We find that many of the recreational home developments start out as second homes, but soon turn into full-time residential developments requiring substantially more water. These are copies of tables 510-1 and 4 showing the listed reduction for indoor use at 400 gallons per connection. Note that the storage volume remains the same and is not reduced. We get many questions regarding the storage volume of hydropneumatic tanks. Can the volume of these tanks be included towards the required storage capacity? The answer is it depends. Community and non-transit, non-community systems with the demand in excess of their source capacity require gravity storage tanks and provide at least two pumping units. So for community drinking water systems, hydropneumatic tanks cannot be counted towards the required storage volume. For transient and non-transient non-community systems with sufficient source capacity, they can count these types of tanks toward their storage requirements. They also are not required to provide redundancy in pumping. To help explain this, the following scenario is given for the Fable Haven town. This fictitious system has a hydrodynamic tank with a volume of 3,000 gallons with a 50% bladder capacity. This water system is a community water system. Since the hydrodynamic tank has a 50% bladder capacity, the effective volume of the tank is 1,500 gallons. Since this is a community water system, the storage volume cannot be counted towards the needed storage capacity. Using the same scenario for the fictitious Fast and Furious rest stop, the following can be determined. This system is a transient non-community water system. The effective volume is the same as before at 1,500 gallons, but since this is not a community water system, the volume of the hydropneumatic tank counts towards the required storage capacity. We are now going to jump into an example capacity calculation using the Excel spreadsheet. We will cover a scenario for the fictitious Fable Haven Town, a community water system, other example calculations for the different types of water systems are provided separately and can be found on the division's website. These examples are found under Programs and Plan Review. The following info will be needed for data input on the spreadsheet and is typically determined during the sanitary survey. The system name is Fable Haven Town. The system number is 29,199. This is a community water system. There are 600 residential connections with three other connections, each using 32,000, 4,000, and 24,000 gallons per day, respectively. For irrigation, 360 of the 600 connections use drinking water for irrigation purposes, with an average of 0 0.05 acres being irrigated. Other connections requiring irrigation include a 10-acre park, 20-acre school, and 5-acre cemetery, all of which are in Zone 3. For fire flow, the local fire marshal requested that 1,500 gallons per minute for two hours be provided. This community has three sources listed here with their associated flow and five storage tanks with their associated storage volume. This is the example Excel spreadsheet. The cells highlighted in green are the only cells we'll modify. You can see here that the water system name and number have been entered. 600 has been entered as the number of residential connections. The number of other connections is three. To determine the equivalent residential connection of these three connections, the gallons per day used for each connection is added together and divided by 800, which is the minimum source demand for indoor use per connection. These three connections end up being the equivalent of 75 residential connections. By entering these values, the minimum indoor capacity requirements are automatically calculated. Next, we'll perform the calculations for outdoor water use. This community is in zone three, so we enter three in this field. 360 of the 600 residential connections are used for irrigation, so we enter 360 in this field. The percentage of residential ERCs using drinking water for irrigation is automatically calculated. And that's at 60%. Next, we need to enter the average acreage per residential connection. This may have to be estimated from an aerial map if the water system doesn't have an accurate estimate. We'll enter 0.5 for the data given. We then need to total the acreage for the other connections. In our scenario, the area of the park, school, and cemetery equals 35 acres. We then need to total the acreage for the other connections. In our scenario, the area of the park, school, and cemetery equals 35 acres. By entering this data, the minimum outdoor capacity requirements are automatically calculated. Next, we'll input our fire flow demands. 
By entering 1,500 gallons per minute for two hours, the 180,000 gallon volume is automatically calculated. At the bottom of the spreadsheet, we enter in the source and storage tank info and the associated flows and volumes. The totals are automatically calculated. For our scenario, this system has a total of 560 gallons per minute available from their sources and 520,000 gallons of total storage. Under the section for equivalent residential connections, you are able to input future obligated connections to verify that the system is able to handle anticipated growth. The total water system requirements are automatically calculated. Source capacity is calculated by adding the indoor and outdoor for a total of 555 gallons per minute. Source capacity is calculated by adding the indoor, outdoor, and fire demand requirements for a total of 583,984 gallons. Water right requirements are also totaled to verify that the system has sufficient water rights. The spreadsheet will then help us determine if the system has adequate source and storage capacity. In this example, this system has just enough source capacity but is lacking or deficient in the needed storage volume. This system is short by about 64,000 gallons. This deficiency for lacking proper storage capacity will need to be documented in the Electronic Sanitary Survey Program. Then please contact me if you have any questions or need help completing your capacity calculations. Thank you.